RE Talk Radio Europe The Book Programme Presented by Hannah Murray Joining us on the line now from the UK is Debbie Hood She qualified as a hairdresser when she left school and has worked as a cosmetic technologist for The Body Shop She's now a product development manager and has always enjoyed writing being most inspired by J.K. Rowling She's with us on The Book Show to talk about her debut novel It's called Jackson King and the Morpher's Heart Jack is no ordinary boy At the age of 16, following a heart transplant Jack suddenly develops mental and physical abilities. Welcome to the book show, Debbie. Thank you. Thanks very much for joining us. So well, I'm interested in your in your background, um, working in uh, for the body shop and, and places like that. Nothing to do with writing. No, it's, uh, it's very different. Um, uh, when I left school, the one thing I wanted to do was hair and get into the beauty um, industry. But at school, the only thing I was really good at was English. And I used to write stories when I was younger, so I had myself and my sister to read, and I always hoped one day I would find the time to write a book. And uh, how did you suddenly get the time? I was working for the body shop, and they were moving the function that I was doing at the time from Littlehampton to London and offering redundancy if I didn't want to go. So I thought it was quite a good time to take a bit of time off and do what I'd always wanted to do. Great. And had you always had an idea of the kind of book you wanted to write? No, I didn't actually. I think because I had a sort of six months time when, when I was driving to and from work, knowing that I was going to be made redundant, I had a lot of time to think about it and heard the whole story was already formed in my head before I wrote a single word. I worked the whole thing out in the six months between knowing that I was going to be made redundant and actually leaving. So I had the whole thing worked out before I wrote anything. And uh, who have you aimed the book at, would you say? I would say it's aimed at certainly young adults. Um, going down probably as young as seven or eight, you know, it, it depending on how well they can read, and um, going up to sort of 14 or 15. Although I've had quite a lot of feedback so far uh, from adults who've read it um, and quite enjoyed it. So I think it's sort of a, a little bit of something for everyone, I think. Yeah. So tell us a bit about Jackson King. Okay, well, Jack, as we know, was born um, with a heart condition. He grew up with his grandparents. And uh, his mother was killed, his father he never knew. Wasn't very good at school, wasn't very good at sports, wasn't very good at making friends, and was always a little bit ill. And then suddenly he has this heart transplant, and life starts to change completely for him. He gains weight, he gets stronger, he looks healthier, and then he discovers that he has this extra power as well where he can um, change his shape. He's become a morpher. What an amazing idea. Where, where did the inspiration for this come from? Do you know? I think I just thought, you know, to, to go from something that was, you know, to have a complete contrast. So he was so weak and so sickly. And to get a new heart, but just not, just not change his life just because the heart, but change it in such a magical way that he could suddenly do things that he couldn't do before. And I just thought that would make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah. So what exactly does a morpher mean then? Morpher is somebody who can change their shape at will. So whether they are able to change from human into animal form or to look like another human. Some of them can only change shape once, so they can only change into one animal. And some of them can change into any animal they want to. I can see why kids would love this story. I guess that would be a lot of kids' <laughs> fantasies to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although he does suffer a little bit of pain doing it. So I think he's not used to it, and the changing of the shape does cause a little bit of pain. Oh. And he's obviously got a, a different reaction from kids at school, has he? Yes, absolutely. They notice that he suddenly looks very different. Um, he doesn't give them a lot of chance to get used to his new form because he doesn't hang around. He's, he's already 17. He doesn't hang around school that much longer. But certainly they do notice that, you know, whereas he was once pale and very thin and always looked very ill, suddenly he doesn't look any of those anymore. He's put on weight. He's got a healthy glow. And he's suddenly looking a lot better. Yeah. And he's getting a few admiring glances now. Too. <laughs> so does he use these powers uh, for good things? Absolutely. I think certainly in in this book, and I do intend to write a sequel, certainly in this one, 
he's literally entered into this world that he doesn't know anything about. He didn't even know that it existed. And he is just getting used to it, but he gets targeted by a gang of criminals who want something that he's got. And so he is forced into this situation that, you know, and he's just got to get out of it. So, no, he's absolutely good. And um, you said there's going to be a sequel. Do you think there will be just be two books or might you continue it into a series? Suddenly I have the whole idea for the second one, which I've written the first chapter for, and I have a, a big idea for a third one. Yeah. And how long did it take to write this book then, having, having not written before? Was it a, an enjoyable experience or, or a bit traumatic? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I really enjoyed it. Um, it took me about a year to actually write the story and then probably about another six months to put it all together so that it flowed. Because I, I wrote each chapter, although one before the other, they had to then flow on. So it took a little while to put it all together. So probably about 18 months in total. And uh, how did you find it? How did you know how to do it, having not done it before? Did you, <laughs> did you take any classes or anything, or, or make it up as you go I along? I didn't. No, I just made it up as I went along. I started, I say I went from chapter to chapter, but I didn't necessarily write it from the beginning and then finish with the end. I certainly wrote the first three chapters first, and then I think I wrote some of the end ones, and then I think I went back to the middle and put down all the ideas that I had and then put a little bit more sort of, uh, meat on the bones, if you like, to sort of make the story a little bit more interesting. And then spent a little time putting them all together, making sure that one chapter flowed into the next. Yeah. And hoped that it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's... However however authors decide to do it, whatever order they do it in, they all say the idea is to just get that first draft down. However you do it, just get something on paper so you can look at it yeah. and edit it and change the order or get yeah. rid of bits or add bits. But it's just it's just that initial first draft, which is key. Getting it, yes, absolutely. And it, it is quite hard work, but at the same time... I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I did really enjoy it. It's having the time to do it properly. And just, you know, and also I was given a bit of a free reign with words as well because of having a fantasy novel, I was able to m make words up, if you like. So I, I spent a bit of time looking at words that I liked in English but then translating them into other languages to see if I could make it more interesting. Oh, brilliant. Um, so that was kind of fun too. Yeah. <laughs> So, with regards to writing the second book, do you think you've learnt a lot from the writing of the first book in terms of maybe what to do again or, or what not to do the second time round? Oh, oh, yes, loads. I've learnt loads. I think I'm writing it in quite a different way and being a lot more careful about it. I think it wasn't really... I wasn't really aware of quite how much work there was going to be until we started the publishing of it. And then I realised just how probably naively I'd written this if I'm honest and I think yes I've learned a lot and I think this one hopefully although it'll probably take as long will probably be a bit easier when it gets to hopefully the publishing stage yeah know. well good luck um, with it all thank you <laughs> If uh, listeners want to get a copy of Jackson King and the Morpher's Heart, it's out now. It's available to buy on the TRE bookshop section on our website and it's by Debbie Hood, who we've been chatting to today. Debbie, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Hannah. It's been a pleasure. The Book Programme, presented by Hannah Murray.